Welcome to part two for preparing to install Exchange Server 2007. This is a several part series video presentation on how to prepare your Active Directory environment for installing Exchange Server 2007 so that when you actually get to the installation of Exchange Server 2007 that it goes smoothly. Yes, we want things to go smoothly, absolutely. So if you haven't seen part one, please go back and watch part one of the series. This is part two. So as we continue with this demonstration, let's again dive right in. Go back into the tools snap-in. And the next thing we're concerned about is our DNS configuration. Now there's no way possible in this short video presentation that I can possibly cover everything that you would need to know about DNS, that's obvious the very involved piece of the puzzle, but at the same time we can take a look at some of the basics. If you have a domain controller or a server that is a DNS server, the first thing you want to do is make sure that on the properties of your TCP IP on your network card that you're configured to point to yourself for DNS. Okay. Now this example here, I have two cars, I have a I have a public card and I have a private card. Most likely in real life, your domain controller is not going to have two network cards. But to give me internet connectivity on this particular virtual machine, I have two network cards. Uh, one is bridged out to the physical network, which is my public card, and one is private. So if I look at my private card and I go to my TCP IP settings, I can see that I have a, you know, of course, a static IP address for my domain controller. Uh, I make sure that I'm pointing to myself for DNS. So I can go ahead and use the uh, loopback address for that. Now, the reason I'm using the loopback address is I actually have DNS installed on this box, right? So I'm pointing to myself for DNS. And then the other network card is my public card that actually gets me out, uh, you know, to the internet. So my public card in this case is obtaining an address automatically you know from my DHCP server uh, so I can get out. Now he's also pointing to himself for DNS even though he's the public card. Alright, now just keep in mind again in real life you probably just have the one network card. This is only the only reason this has two is for demonstration purposes only. Okay, so now if we take a look at our DNS configuration uh, what we can do here is look at our forward lookup zone, which we have itvideocoach.local. Now the most important thing I'm looking for here is the IP address of the server that is my domain controller. That's going to be my schema master. He is my main primary domain controller. He has DNS installed. Okay, So this is the domain controller that does have DNS installed, which is very important. I'm pointing to myself. And I'm going to look at this record. I see that it's DC1 at 172.16.0.1. I want to go to the properties of my zone and go to my name server tab. This is absolutely, without a doubt, the most important record in DNS. We have to make sure that this IP address and that this name is correct. If there's a problem here, you can click Edit and you can put that information in there statically. Okay? Just like that. Now, you may see the wrong IP address in here. You may see unknown. And these situations usually occur because you have more than one IP address bound to an individual network card. Or you have two cards like I have here. Okay, I do have another video presentation that shows you step by step if you're going to have two network cards in a box that is a DNS server, how to make sure that the public card doesn't register its address internally. What we don't want to have happen is have a public IP address showing up internally for our internal namespace for itvideocoach.local for example and cause confusion by having DC1 in there with a public address of 172.16.0.1 and then have another record let's say for DC1 for I don't know something external 198.14.10.85 you know, whatever that public IP address would be. Now, the reason that this name server record is so important is because Active Directory uses these service location records. And all these service location records 
all depend upon that particular A record. Again, if we look at the zone, the A record is the name server record for 172.16.0.1. It is your name server. It's how we define who he is. In every single one of these service location records, that helps us find services in Active Directory, guess who they all point to? DC1, DC1, DC1. They're all pointing to the same server. That's to help you find your global catalog, your Kerberos authentication, LDAP queries, all these different options, all of them all point to the same exact box. So it is bar none the most important record. You've got to make sure that that guy is clean. Okay. The other thing I want to show you is that by default when you pr perform a DC promo, it installs Active Directory, it installs DNS, it makes the DNS zone an AD integrated zone by default. So the type of zone, the type is Active Directory integrated. It's a primary zone, it's stored in Active Directory. Okay. The dynamic updates are set to secure only, which is just fine. Now what is not created for you by default is a reverse lookup zone. Now this is probably not so important for your um, internal DNS, but definitely important for your external. So we're going to build a brand new reverse lookup zone. And we can store it in Active Directory, that's okay. All the domain controllers in the domain that have DNS installed, we'll pick that option. I'm not going to explain those choices right there. You could probably go with either one of these and you would be okay in most cases. Uh, the network ID, 172.16.0.0. We'll just leave it at zero. It's going, to it's going to be a reverse lookup zone. So we'll make that 172.16.0, just like that. Secure dynamic updates is just fine. And we now have a reverse lookup zone. Also, by the way, when you do this, make sure advanced is not turned on. It could get a little bit confusing. It shows us some additional options. When we go to add our PTR record, we get a lot of choices here. I'd always recommend, especially for a beginner, just to keep advanced view turned off. If you ever see a bunch of options in DNS that you're not familiar with, you're probably in advanced view. So just turn that off. And then we're going to add manually a PTR record for our domain controller. So we'll just put in one. That's the actual IP address of our domain controller with DNS. And we're going to browse out here to itvideocoach.local and we're going to find that record. And we just browse here, pick DC1, and that will add that record for us. And whenever you manually add a PTR record, you must put in the fully qualified name. Okay, it must be the fully qualified name when you add that record in there. So that looks pretty good. So we got a good four lookup zone. We got the reverse lookup zone going. Uh, let's also check our DNS settings on the server properties. Make sure he's listening just on the one IP address. Again, that would be important if you have multiple network cards like I have here or multiple IP addresses on your private card. And then have your forwarders configured uh, properly. We want a simple forward out to our ISP or UUNet or whoever your provider happens to be, or maybe even to a DNS server in your DMZ, right? Now, if I'm forwarding out, I don't really use my root hints, but it's there if I ever lose my forward or configuration, okay? So if this gets removed, then I'll use root hints instead. Now, 2008 has an option where if forwarders fails, it'll drop back and use root hints, but 2003 doesn't have that feature. And then the last thing we can do is just verify we have good internet name resolution. So we'll go to our command prompt and go to NS lookup. And we just want to spot check. So we'll do something like cnn.com. And you can see, boom, right away, we've got good name resolution. So that's a, a quick look at DNS. We're not going to create MX records yet. After we get Exchange installed and get it all configured, then we'll come back and take a look at how to add the MX records for a public namespace and then how it sends it into the internal namespace of .local even though you're publicly .com. That completes part two of this series of pre-installation steps for Exchange Server 2007. Stay tuned for the next one coming up next.